and whenever you are and welcome back to Phoenix Iwaki. Welcome back to Fandelver, but not as you know it. Unfortunately, our fa fabulous friend Mai is not able to join us today. And the main plot of Fandelver and Below is very focused on her character's backstory right now. So we could not jump into things there. Big shout out everyone in chat. How you doing? It's good to see you all. Hope you're having yourselves a nice weekend. Scottish Geek, good to see you. Dutch Dungeons, good to see you mates. Um, need to do some messages soon. Eldercat, hello, hello. Welcome in everybody. Now, um, we, as I said, are um, without our um, servant friend here. So we cannot return to Thunder Tree and the looming green dragon that had um, been awakened by the party. So more to look forward to there coming soon. But I did want to jump in and play a game with my fine friends here because, you know, on a every other week stream, if you miss one, then that's a whole month. We don't want that. So we're jumping in here. And as I said um, in the Discord and stuff, a good GM listens to their players. And my players said, and I quote, Mike, expand our little corner of Fandolin lore. Shez, a level 20 flash forward. Sophia, kids of Fandolin. And my in absentia, maybe you guys can run another Grant Howitt of Honey Heist fame. I did listen. To all of those fine people and we should listen to what the adventure says too you are wanted in several countries for collateral damage caused whilst saving the world big now let me set our scene As our heroes were off and away in Thunder Tree, it was one balmy night when the stars Death scattered King, across King. the night sky. You are audible. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you're good, you're good. The stars scattered across the night sky like so many spilt diamonds and glittering torches. In sconces around Fandolin, as it slumbered peacefully at the foot of the mountains. But also out in the fields and along the roads towards the main tribe or trail, fire guttered, guttering torches being held aloft, almost reverently, you might say as the goblins, in the name of their new fire god, Snofrit, descended on the human and humble folk and elf and goblin town of Fandolin. For Snofrit, ah, yes, burn it down, fire! The people of Fandolin rose to the sound of banging bells. Clang, 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 clang. Everyone, to arms, to arms. The troll hunters aren't here. We must protect ourselves. And we zoom in to the inn where Sophia's character's sister and family dwell. The father of the family grabbing a large rolling pin from the kitchen goes dashing to bar the door and prepare to repel boundaries. But the back door slams on its hinges and there is the patter of tiny feet, as an all-powerful saucer, Pip, Liar's nephew, rushes out to defend his town with his magical abilities. As he cowers, shivering with nervous and the chill of the night, he sees the first of the goblins approaching the town. Reaching out, he calls upon his sorcerous abilities. But we know above the table Pip was actually a warlock of the Sisters of Nightbrook. 
and those pesky adventurers battled through their amnesia last week and destroyed the remnants of that which is coven. Pip gasps as nothing happens. His magical powers depleted. He must have not got a good enough nap in the afternoon. Oh no. What shall I do? My source of abilities. I must go back to the source. And he turns and flees to the alleyway. One usually inhabited by Mike's other guys. Runt. He goes rushing there. Down on his knees on the cobblestones, looking in the wall for the interesting stone. The one that spoke to him. The one that promised power. But there's nothing there. It's just a regular building wall. Smooth stones. No hint of a humanoid form amongst them. No voice in his mind. No refreshing of his power. I... What do I do? What do I do? Another voice. Deep. Silky smooth. With a hint of danger playing round the edges. Oh... Don't worry, little Pip. I know what you can do. Pip spins. A figure steps out of the shadows, silhouetted against the moonlight. A tall, impossibly good-looking figure in a leather jacket and dark cloak. It is an incubus. The fiend steps forward, and Pip's eyes go wide. <gasps> Grandfather! Hello, little Pip. It's been too long. I see you found yourself in a bit of a bother. You know, I could help you out, if you're willing to sow a little chaos. Always, Grandfather, always, says Pip. Well, take this. You can read, can't you? Yes, yes, Auntie Leia taught me with all of her stuffy books. Unfortunately, but yes, I can, I can. Take this. Run to the centre of town. There are ancient guardians locked away within their own memories. This will awaken them, and they shall defend your town. Okay, yeah, I, I, I got it, I got it. Pip snatches the curled parchment, and the incubus smiles, his teeth glinting in the moonlight, and he fades from view, the smile the last thing to disappear. Pip runs to the centre of the town. You can hear combat on the edge. The goblins are approaching. There's blazes flaring up. The roof, the thatches, the hay... It's all being torched by these goblins, these worshippers of Snofreet. Pip skids to a halt in the middle of the street, unfurls the parchment, hands shaking, and scrunches his brow. The first word, it's, it's not a word that Auntie Lyra ever taught him, but he can sound it out. She taught him to sound the words out. He looks up at the goblins approaching and calls on the ancient defenders locked away, hidden in Phandalin, but ready ever to leap to its defense. As the young saucer screams into the night. Sexy battle wizards! Sexy battle wizards! Sexy battle wizards! <laughs> and, <laughs> let me just uh, switch things up here. Boop, boop. As, he intones the words, the magical words of power that awaken the guardians. Three of the town's guardians are brought back to awareness. Across town, in the trees, amidst the trees of the Edamath Orchard, a elderly drow, intent on cultivating the beautiful orchard and bringing this back to life, after retiring from adventuring life, snaps around as his memories come back to him. 
He's now drow retired adventurer. He is Prism Hexatronic. And he is here to defend Vandalin. Shez. As he is linked to your characters in the game. I was you hoping for this. Shall be playing Prism Hexatronic. Let Hell yeah, dude. Switch up the frames here because I have them ready. <laughs> oh, Send me a friggin' I... character sheet, brother. There isn't one. <laughs> this is <laughs> wonderful. But I do need to make a couple of rolls, my friends. And also make a couple of then... choices. <laughs> Thank you. I shall oh. run to get more D6s. <laughs> Please do. Chez. Yep. You are the drow sexy battle wizard known as Prism Hexatronic. I need you to put three numbers, three, two, one, in sexy battle and wizard. Which okay. is your main ability? Am I rolling d6s or what am I rolling? You will roll d6s, yes, but just for now, just just what is your most powerful ability? Are you sexy, are you sexy the battle or the wizard? Is it the sexiness, the martial prowess, or the arcane abilities? I gotta... I gotta, you know, I'm like a retired adventurer. Not anymore. That, that was left. the lie. That was the cloak that you put to right. hide behind. <laughs> but I think for like the longest time, I haven't been training battle. I haven't even been training wizard. But you know what I've been training? Sexy. <laughs> so your sexy is three. And sexy back. Yeah. Okay. Is your two in battle or wizard? Uh, I think it's battle because I think uh, I think okay. I'm a ranger by class, aren't I? Oh no, no, that was all a lie. Oh, Darren, okay, Darren okay. Edamath never existed. It was Prism right. Hexatronic the whole time, hidden behind okay, then I think, this altar. I think I'm sexy, battle, and wizard in that order. In that order. Okay, three, two, one. Thank you. Please roll a d6. Why are you so sexy? Uh, <laughs> Question a posed by Grant Howard. <laughs> uh, I've got a four. A four. <laughs> this works well with the drow. You have amazing bone structure. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Have you seen those cheekbones? Yeah. Also, I need yeah. you to roll a d10 twice for your signature weapon. d10 twice, that's a 4, and an 8 for a 12. You have a celestial chain that you unfurl Ooh. as you step from the trees of the orchard. And last but not least, a d6 for your magical school. Let me make notes of this. It's a 4. Please do. Um, you are a wizard of... Arcana of the Supreme Doorway. Okay, so I, so Man, my so my main is sexy. Sexy. My weapon is uh, two celestial change. A celestial chain. Yep. And my you have ama last one? amazing bone structure, which is why you're so sexy. And right. your magical school is Arcana of the Supreme Doorway. Gotcha. Magical school, Arcana Indeed. of Supreme Doorway. Gotcha. Indeed. And Full on, like you know, like Super Sentai, um, like you know, like um, um, Sailor Moon, like full on transformation. You just whoosh and step out and just burst from the tree line. Leaves explode around you as you fly into the night to save the town of Vandalin. Yeah. Next. Exactly. At the side of town, a short distance away, there is a cave. A cave that you have all traveled to before. Outside that cave is a rushing river, the cold waters of which cover a submerged alien artifact. There was a warforged, lost to the waters, hidden beneath the waves, forgotten by his friends and allies but now beneath the rippling waters and the, and the gushing water we see two illuminating pools of light as the eyes of the robot come back on you went by the name of Sep in your hidden life as a grave digger in Vandalin but now the inhibitor chip is overridden, and your true form awakens as you burst from the water. Warp power bomb. <laughs> the Warforged Wizard from Eberron 
visiting this world to save it from the dangers it faces. Let me save and change up your uh, your thing here. Warp power button. On behalf of the whole Worldwide Fandling Federation, <laughs> I'm gonna snap into you like a Slim Jim. <laughs> Warp power bomb. Are you strongest in sexy battle or wizard? Let's keep things diverse. Uh, I was gonna go for battle, but I'd like to do wizard sure. because I want to be a magical bearded girl. <laughs> okay, you are still your, the robot. <laughs> yes. But yes. That's that's, but the, that's the beauty of it. Just how you like. <laughs> and then your number two. My number two. Uh, we'll do battle. Battle. Okay, and then not too sexy, but always mm -hmm. sexy. Now, why are you so sexy? D6, please. How's a one there? Okay. Sculpted muscles. Crafted, you might say, from metal <laughs> and parts. No more giggling time! <laughs> okay, so. Warp power bomb. You are a warforged with sculpted muscles. What is your signature weapon? 2d10, please. Uh, I have a 10 and a 9. Okay. You have, <laughs> again, this kind of goes with the Warforged nicely, a Doom Fist. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay, Shiz's was the bone structure. I'm making notes for myself as well. And the um, Celestial Chain. And the... Um, was it the arcana of the something doorway? What was it? The supreme doorway? The supreme doorway, yeah. I'm arcana of supreme doorway, yes. Okay, what's yours? Warp power bomb. And that's a D6 here? Yes, indeed. Uh, another one. Okay. You follow the lore of light. L-O-R-E lore. Ooh. Okay. Sculpt. Tid muscles. I mean, with all that oil on the <laughs> muscles, it is enlightening. Doom fist. And the lore of light. Okay. Next, and last but not least, Sophia. Just near where Pip summoned these heroes of Vandalin, these lost guardians. A dark cloud of black and purple mist starts to roil and churn little flickers of lightning and sparkles inside and then whoosh! A cambion steps through. Looking around, they raise their eyebrows, and if you'll excuse me, railroading you for just a moment here, right at the very start. They sigh and they look down at Pip. They sigh again. Oh, this is the place you came last time, where you were celebrating after saving Thunder Tree. Uh, well, pretty much saving Thunder Tree. I mean, there was the volcano, but apart from that, oh no, this is the place you winked at that woman, and she immediately became pregnant with twins. Oh no, what are you gonna do? <laughs> As you step forward from your fiendish hideaway, Symphony Hexblood. <laughs> The third member of our party and parents oh, of Lyre and her sister. And we ne we never knew. Nope. <laughs> and we never will. I, I want to say thank you to Mai, who inadvertently you know, missed today and gave me the ability. I've been racking my brains for so long as to why you two were tieflings. <laughs> and now <laughs> we know. <laughs> A sexy battle yeah. wizard winked at your mother. <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it. This is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sophia, why are you so damn sexy? Um, also in the game. <laughs> Please roll a d6. <laughs> uh, that is a three. A three. Okay. Oh. Art imitating life. Impeccable, pristine style. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> just 
quickly write these down. Impeccable, pristine style. <laughs> and um, a couple of d10s, please. What is your weapon? Uh, okay, a couple of d10s. Two d10s. Yeah, we'll talk one twice. We'll two d10s. Yeah, please. Two d10s. Alrighty. Uh, a five and an eight. Ooh, okay. You are also a chain wielder, but yours is not a celestial chain. Yours is a ghost wolf chain. Ooh. Oh, that's kinky. <laughs> and kinky finally, indeed. what is your school of magic? Uh, which dice was that? A d6, please. A d6. Also, I'd like to say our little kind of slapdash uh, logo down in the bottom corner here. This is the official Sexy Battle Wizards logo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. <laughs> Uh, a six. A six, okay. Um, you follow the way of 10,000 mirrors. Me. <laughs> that checks out. Also me. This, this, this character is coming together with the mirrors and the chains <laughs> and the impeccable pristine style. It's born itself. <laughs> okay. Let me uh, switch things up a little bit here. So, we have Prism, Hexatronic, Drow, with impeccable bone structure, a celestial chain, follower of Arcana of the Supreme Doorway. We have Symphony Hexplit, the Cambion, with impeccable pristine style, a ghost wolf chain, following the way of 10,000 mirrors. And finally, bursting from the river waters next to the troll cave, we have Warp Powerbomb, Warforged with impeccable sculpted muscles, a Doom Fist, and a follower of the Law of Light. <laughs> My friends, you quickly assess the situation. Oh, um, sorry, Symphony Hexplode. We get to, we need to get your stats. Um, what is your your strongest sexy battle or wizard? Well, since I clearly impregnated someone with a stat. <laughs> a wink. It goes a wink, a wink. Then clearly it's sexy first. Okay. And then uh, I'll go wizard okay. and then battle. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. As our sexy battle wizards emerge from their long hibernation, you see the town beset by fire and goblins, followers of the evil Snofrit. What would you like to do? <laughs> Over to you, my friends. Prism. <laughs> can I? Symphony. Can I? Can I sexy this problem? <laughs> Whatever we do, wink at no one. <laughs> it's very important. Leave them hang. And, yes. Now, how many goblins are there? <laughs> I, I, a, a horde is the, I think, the technical a term. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Let us go face this horde. Perhaps our very sight will quell them to run back from whence they came. <laughs> I, I must say, I plan to um, do the face at them. Y you know, the face. Yes. Yes. <laughs> ah. The face. The smashing smolder. I've long since waited for that sexy strike. <laughs> oh, some call it Magnum, others call it Blue Steel. <laughs> <laughs> Let us be on with our magnificent selves. <laughs> you power through the town, three streaks of light across the Fandalin sky, and crash down three-point landings all around <laughs> in the dirt and the cobblestones and the gravel of the main thoroughfare into town. There is a grinning, leering, fire-illuminated, chittering horde of goblins. Ah, you won't save your town! Get out of here, you silly funny daddies! Ah. Suppose you silly funny daddies. Stop Do you free. not see Stop Stop these free. glorious Stop muscles? <laughs> okay, what would you like to do, friends? Um... I think before we descend into additional violence, 
um, symphony would just like to glare at every single one of them mm -hmm. and boom their voice and just say, be gone or else face the consequences. <laughs> to try and just scare them off. Okay. So that it just, just kind of um, at not taking them seriously enough, just thinking that a single scary boom will drive them off. Okay. So are you using your wizard powers to amplify your voice? And... I would, uh, you know, I'm amplifying my voice, but I think my presence is supposed to be enough. So I'll leave it up to you if that's supposed to be sexy or wizard. <laughs> it feels it feels like it's trying to be. I think if you, if the sexiness comes through, they'll they'll come towards you. <laughs> I think if we're trying to drive oh, drive it. them you're, away. You're correct. <laughs> Shows how much I know. Bike? Wizard it is. So how how does a way of the ten thousand mirrors sexy battle wizard amplify their voice? How does this look? Okay. I don't know if this is possible, but I would want to materialize uh, light as if it's reflecting, like just like mirrors, mm -hmm. and then think of it as my voice booming with this light that is coming and reflecting off of me, <laughs> and I look very resplendent in that moment. <laughs> okay, so yes, you boom out this command at the goblins. Hey, Phantom. And the um, these ethereal mirrors start to shimmer in the air. It reflects and reverberates and amplifies off the mirrors. Get out of here! Get away from this place! And please uh, roll me 2d6. Now, when we try to do stuff in um, the game of Sexy Battle Wizards, you roll d6s, um, equivalent to the number that you have in that ability. And there are three difficulty settings. There is standard Sexy Battle Wizard stuff, there is audacious or risky stuff, and there is clutch against the odds stuff. <laughs> now, if you get over the difficulty rating, you succeed. If you equal, you succeed, but you take a stress and something bad happens. Mm -hmm. If you fail, you take the stress and, um, let's look here. Yeah, you gain one stress, but you also gain one determination. If you get... <laughs> If you get um, a determination, you can use that to add a dice to a, another roll. And our friends over there in chat, you may have seen our channel points, our dream pies have changed a smidge. If you would like to use your dream pies, you can award d6s that the players can pool um, for their use later on. Now, can I, I get should the warn help you. action by like scowling. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I should warn you um, if you fail, and your final stress is higher than the highest number on the dice, you, uh, quote-unquote, explode in a burst of magic and reform in the Chapel of Ages inside the College Errant, your base of operations. <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm going to see Dutch Dungeons jumping right in there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Um, so, um, that is, you have 1d6 um, up for grabs, should you wish to use it. Um, so, that's a, a communal pool there. <laughs> oh, and another. Thank you, Phantom. <laughs> 2d6. Kicking around Thank just to you. get that awesome stuff going down there. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay. It's I a think communal pool? Phantom, it's okay. We'll do, we'll, do, we'll do a communal pool, I think, that people can dip into. Yeah, yeah. I, had, I had originally thought it was you know, be for per person. But uh, Phantom's given one to everyone anyway, so thank you, Phantom. <laughs> There's three in total. There's four. Four in total, yeah. I think oh my one, god. Two, three, no, five now. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Tenkata. <laughs> okay, so um, um, thank you, everyone. Join I'd like to use my eyebrows to uh, give the help action. <laughs> my no eyebrows such... in their bone structure. <laughs> no such thing in this game, I'm afraid. Uh, everyone is okay. too sexy. <laughs> All right. Oh, and another for one. Own good. <laughs> Six. <laughs> you got to use these dice, guys. <laughs> Can't take them with us. All right. I've got, <laughs> I've got an idea. <laughs> I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Should, should we just burn them all? Should we just burn them all in one go? Just, 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 just like Supernova. <laughs> <laughs> Every roll, let's burn one of these dice. Um, okay. All right. So, no Symphony Hex, please. I, I don't roll any dice, I'm afraid, Elder Cack, but thank you. Hey, Christina. 
Okay. It's like powered by the apocalypse. They got this. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, just give it to us again. <laughs> no, they, they <laughs> have enough. <laughs> no, we only have six dice in our communal pool. <laughs> um, the sexy battle wizards saved you from the killer bikini vampire girls. Oh, thank you. That's so good, Tank Hunter. I'm glad. I'm glad they were there to help you. Um, I hope the authorities weren't too uh, pissed off by the uh, collateral damage. Okay, um, now, <laughs> um, you. <laughs> Phantom's too sexy for his want. Uh oh. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. No, no, sorry. <laughs> I am full sexy for my want. Full sexy for my want. So sexy. <laughs> Where's the accent from? He's Fixed British. <laughs> I think he's yeah, but the song had an accent. <laughs> it kind of did. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. <laughs> okay, I was the only one alive. Come on. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> I was around for the replay. <laughs> you were crawling on the floor, probably. <laughs> and it was just last week. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um, okay. I'm a baby. <laughs> baby. Um, Symphony Hexpert, please roll me. Yes. 2d6. Plus as, as many of these, this huge pool overflowing okay. with these sixes. I, I shall take one from the pool <laughs> so that we can milk them throughout the session. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's good. It you know, get, gets, uh, gets rid of the channel points for other games. <laughs> so that's all good. <laughs> okay. So I rolled uh, a, a... Do I give you the total or each individual? Um, just give me the highest. Ones. The highest one is a five. A five, okay. Um, this is this is not like the max difficulty, but this is this is audacious, risky stuff that has a great impact, quote unquote. Okay, you are successful, but you do take a stress, and something bad happens. So, oh, as you boom out, your voice reverberating through the mirrors, amplifying. The goblins are like, ah, no, no, it is the power of anti-flame. No, it is a extinguisher of the fiendish players. No. Um, and the little goblins start running away, but you hear a <coughs> and You know those massive ogres in Lord of the Rings, like the big battle against the, um, mm -hmm. is it, is it Minas yes. I want to say Minas Tirith. They were in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And they have those massive ogres with like the cast iron like helmets on that just like mm -hmm. bust through the gates and stuff. Like three of them start just <laughs> down the things and just charging straight towards Lyra's sister's inn. Oh. <laughs> um, oh so no. to make... Not my grandchild. Warp power bomb. What do you do? Someone so here says, we're gonna. Oh, I live we're there. gonna. <laughs> We're gonna, if you're okay with it, Chaz, I'd like to do something fun. No. I'm My dear Prism, totally. we're going. <laughs> totally. <out. laughs> you know I hate fun, um, dude. Be careful. <laughs> fun. Unbelievable. On this channel? Prism. As I'd long like as to totally show serious, them a little no bit. jokes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Why am I here? Um, Prism. I'd like to amplify that smolder. And I'd like to use my wizard to oh, okay. separate my body and transform into like a light set <laughs> as the school of light and then mm -hmm. light, yep. i want to use the current smolder that prism has and just amplify it as if he's on a concert stage or on on a main stage <laughs> okay <laughs> oh no we found one of the one of the collateral damages rubble jacks is Robo Jax's cousins were sent to the hospital due to torsions and Brazilian waxings. No. <laughs> Damn them. Damn those sexy battle wizards. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, okay, so you, um, yes, warp power bomb. Um, please roll me a three dice check here. This is a, this is for you. You know, using your uh, natural abilities. This is standard sexy battle wizard stuff. Indeed. <laughs> and I will take another dice Please from the do. pool. Okay, that is four to roll. And it's the highest, right? Please just tell me the highest, yeah. Yep, five. A five, excellent. Yes, you succeed. Um, please describe what happens. So his body sort of separates, and game. you see some of the very muscular <laughs> arms illuminated by the school of light turn into these, like, they expand out and they become these, like, big lights you get the legs that become boom boxes and the body just ends up 
separating and becoming a big like microphone stand and like you've got two pyrotechnics coming in it separates <laughs> his body and it illuminates the smolder <laughs> for whatever uh, amazing. Prism does next. amazing okay so yes all of the parts separate and hovering there in the air Boosh, 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 boosh. The floodlights come on. The subwoofers erupt. And Prism Hexatronic strides forward with their amazing bone structure primed and ready. Prism Hexatronic, you will get an extra dice on whatever you're about to do. Okay. Uh, so the, our present goal is to stop them from advancing towards the inn, right? Um, um, yes, just you're trying to save the town however you can. Yeah. Okay, so I will, um, so I've got this, like, magical sound system around me, and, uh, I, like, pull out, like, a magic mic from nowhere, and, um, speaking of magic mic, there's, like, a pole right in front of me as well, for some reason, <laughs> um, and I do, like, a, like, I, like, grip the pole with just my, uh, calves, and I, like, do, like, a spin around the pole, and I say, everybody vogue! <laughs> and I'm trying to, like, basically cast, like, whole person, but, like, you know, just stop into Vogue is what I'm trying to cast. Okay. And it's, like, it's like coming out of my, like, bones into my voice <laughs> through the mic. Mm -hmm. So sorry, <laughs> are we... Reverberating through my eyebrows. Are we, are we... We're using your sexy here, yes? Yes, I am trying to use my sexy here. Okay. Yes. Um, and I'll... Just while we, while we roll this and calculate... Cool dice as well. Okay. As we, as we roll this and calculate just how sexy this is... Um, I have a little um, assignment for chat. Um, chat, here is the link to the sexy battle wizard name generator I used for these three fine <laughs> adventurers. Um, please head on over there and tell us in chat, what is your sexy battle wizard name? <laughs> there it is. Okay, um, so, Prism Hexatronic, you step forward. The music rumbling as we hear the Avernus rock. I think the Cambion brought the uh, Avernus rock with them. And um, although the, the chaotic uh, grandfather Incubus, um, I think, was uh, going for a more of an abyssal kind of vibe. But <laughs> um, you step forward, your cheekbones. There's a thrum in the, <laughs> there's a thrum in the air um, as there's just this wine just beyond the edge of hearing as they cut through time and space as you stride forward and um, please roll me your three sexy dice your extra dice from warp power bomb and your extra dice from the pool for a total of five in this audacious move okay so the pool is down to three yes i rolled uh, no, still, three still fives four. and two ones. <laughs> oh wow okay um that means you succeed but something bad does happen i'm afraid oh no okay mm. now please describe to me what effect does this have on these siege ogres. So all these ogres are like, oh my god, he's challenging us to a sexy off. And, and you know, like, all ogres, they're like, oh, we're sexy for ogres. Like, all ogres think that they're sexy for ogres. So they're like, oh, this is nothing. We can do this. And then the, they're like trying to like Vogue and like, and they're trying to like blue steel and they're trying to bag them. And they're like, you know, they've got like blue copper and like, you know, like, like, like Magnum minus one, you know, like, they've got like, like they've got like shitty versions of like the face and they're just like realizing it's taking a lot of energy just to keep up so like they're like you know just slowing down on their advance and some of them are just passing out from how hard it is to like just keep up the face right so it's like this yeah just imagine like, you're just you're just you're trying to yeah you're trying to make headway against the power of blue steel basically yeah. so you just just like it's, as if it's like a, a buffeting hurricane of charisma coming in the other direction the two two of them are like just struggling against it they drop to one knee they attempt one last pose and they drop their face contorted in a rictus grin as they realize they cannot never could never be as sexy and it's exactly like zoolander where uh, blue steel and magnum for, for some reason create some sort of like magnetic field that you have to push against yep. it's exactly like zoolander Prism Hexatronic so or, or One Piece. So hard. <laughs> it, it's, it's the Conqueror's Hockey in One Piece. That's what that, that's what it is. <laughs> and um, you defeat two of them, but as we said, that is a little bit of stress for you. And there is something bad that happens. 
could it be? The third and final juggernaut rips off the steel helmet. Long, flowing, golden locks erupt from beneath, springing it's out like in stupid. natural curls, and he shakes them free in slow motion. He has cheekbones just a smidge blunter than yours, but they're right up there. And he pushes through the charisma and advances on the town. A couple of the Fandalin residents run out with pitchforks and flaming torches. No, get away from... Oh, oh, good lord. Oh, and faint from the sheer awesome presence of this juggernaut. And he turns. Yes, Stoffrit has chosen me as his poster boy. And charges onwards. Warp power bomb. What do you do as your body reconstitutes and you focus your power on this final marauding juggernaut of an ogre? It is time to live up to my name. And like a wrestling move, the lights flicker before they illuminate completely. They just came out of nowhere. It's part of the magic. And above, above, the dear, uh, stupid, sexy ogre, I will deliver the warp power bomb with a battle move as I elbow straight onto those cheek gauntlets <laughs> to remind him there's only one set of cheeks that are sharp enough to deal with him. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yes, please roll me a battle roll. That is two dice. How many of the pool would you like? There are four left. Guys, do you mind if I take two just for the stupid sexy? Please, please. That's four. Let's do it. Go for it. Take them all. Oh, oh, the six. Yes. Okay. So describe to me as what power bomb reconstitutes the light still shining between the seams and the joints and the lore of light as it was written in the stars in the founding of the very universe. How does this power bomb elbow? destroy this juggernaut i think you hear and before you see from the lore of light school a booming voice he's going for the power bomb he's going for the power bomb as the elbow delivers smack straight on top of the head and in a flash of light warps back to the stage and flexes <laughs> nice okay <laughs> we forgot we have Tank Hunter's name here. Capricious Ascension gifts sexy support through the sexy site connection. <laughs> Good name, Tank. Okay. <laughs> what, other, what other names do we get? Do we get other names? I, I missed them. Sorry, I got uh, wrapped up in the uh, in the fun. <laughs> oh, there might be a few. Hold on. <laughs> sexy Squidward. That's not one of them. Anthracite Thunder. Wow. <laughs> nice, Christina. Jinx Juice. <laughs> Elder Kang. We got Warp Raptor, Raptor <laughs> from Dutch Dungeons. Nice. <laughs> Enjoy, folks. Scroll up if you missed the link. Grab your uh, sexy battle wizard name. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So, Warp Powerbomb. Yes, the Powerbomb elbow destroys this final juggernaut utterly. And they are collapsed on the ground with possibly sexy little canaries spinning around their head. <laughs> <laughs> tweet, 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 <laughs> um, And um, you see that the people of Fandalin are emerging, wide-eyed. They were doomed. The, the village was lost. But beyond all odds, they were saved by heroes. Heroes of lore, stories made manifest, embodied in the very night air in front of them. But all of you know, if these mortal villagers were to look upon you, Prism's cheekbones, Warp's muscles, Symphony's impeccable pristine style, there's no way they could survive. How are you going to extricate yourselves without melting the minds of these humble Fandalin villagers? 
I know exactly how. One moment, please. <laughs> I, I put on a scarf just to hide my cheekbones. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. The power of sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> she puts on sunglasses. I put on a scarf just, and... Uh, <laughs> what does Runt do? What does Mike do? Oh, oh, uh, well. Um... Please note Warth I'm wearing prob- sunglasses on top of my glasses. <laughs> in the <laughs> epitome of sexes. So, just for kicks and giggles, I think Warp would transform into a grand baby piano so that Symphony could either lay on it or play on it like Elton John with the big shades. <laughs> I think you're all making this worse rather than better. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, <laughs> what power bomb transforms into a baby grand a symphony hex book? Do you tinkle the ivories? <laughs> yes. With consent from Warp, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I am now in costume and therefore unrecognizable. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I think. Hmm, let's see here. This is okay. too hot. <laughs> you know, For the next nice. hundred years, scarves and sunglasses and baby grand pianos become the most popular household items. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Throughout all, it's unbelievable. all of Fandalba. Um, okay, I'm going to need all of you um, to call on your wizard abilities to hide the sexiness here. So I do need a roll from each of you, please. Um, so Symphony is two, Warp is three, Prism is just one. Um, there are three dice in the pool. I'll, I'll use the pool dice. Okay. Yeah. You should take two if you can. And then, Sophia, you should take one. And then that way, at least, you guys are like, we're all even with three. This is, this I rolled is, a five and is, a two. This is regular sexy, sexy, sexy battle. Oh, it's regular sorry. sexy? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Okay. You want to go over the so, uh... so, Prism Hexatronic is okay. Ooh. All right. A six from Warp. A okay. Perfect baby grand. <laughs> and a five? That's okay. a very normal baby grand. Not sexy at all. Very normal. <laughs> Success! A very grand baby grand. <laughs> Success as you all manage to conceal the sexiness just long enough for the villagers to throng around you singing your accolades and praise along with the piano accompaniments of Symphony Hexblood at the Warp Powerbomb Baby Grand. <laughs> and... Um, it is very shiny, yes. <laughs> um, and the tune is enjoyed, and the general atmosphere is one of jubilation and celebration. I should jump back to the, uh, the celebratory music here. There we go. Um, and um, Prism. Hey, Robojack's Claymore Thundersman sending a boom. <laughs> thank you. Um, actually, we stopped uh, We stopped doing particular people. with it. We're making a pool for everyone, Rubble Jacks, but thank you very much. <laughs> um, okay, so... There's is, there is three in the pool at the moment, everyone. Um, okay, so yes, the people of Thunder are talking. Oh, thank you so much! Oh, thank you! This is this You saved us from those pesky goblins. They've been lurking around the place recently. We've seen there's some right funny ones with purple and green glows and, and, no, and these ones. No, no, no. No need to thank us. It is but our duty. Sir or madam, um, I, I, I must, I must, uh, I must ask all of you, uh, what do you intend to do about the ones that ran away? Surely they'll reform and come and lay waste to us once you're gone. Oh, we shall make sure they never return. Oh, will, you, will you pursue them into the mountains? That seems rather far. And I do have a nail appointment. What do you? What do the rest of you think? <laughs> we could just wait. We could wait for them to come back. What is that, right? I suppose. Oh no, no! The, the, this this fellow over there, standing by the wall, that that fellow over there with the spiky hair and the glasses, the um, GM he's called. He, he says you really should go into the mountains and pursue them. <laughs> oh, he's is he like a is he like a quest NPC? He'll just give us a quest. Ah, well, all right, one moment. John, 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 my John kicks off the wall. <laughs> <until tomorrow>. Thank <laughs> you. Let's go. John kicks off the wall. He's like shit. They can see me. <laughs> <We'll disappear. laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Did that man just disappear into thin air? <laughs> To the mountains! <laughs> Let us go. Um, okay, so um, amidst the, the cheers and the jubilations and the oops and the hollers of the thankful villagers of 
Bandolin, um, you set out towards the ethereal, almost ghostly mountains with their glistening snow lit by the moon above as Saloon beams down upon you all, bathing you and worshipping at your sexiness as opposed to the other way around. Now, you need... Hang on, let's switch that music again. As you leave the celebrating town behind you, you make your way out across the fields, into the foothills, and up towards the mountains. How would you like to track these pesky goblets? Hmm. Um, does, does the umbrella of battle include like tracking skills? I think I think that you could you could um, argue it either if there's a way to use your um, I mean you know uh, prism hexatronic you are a follower of the arcana of the supreme doorway surely right. surely a wizard of journeys and traveling and moving yeah. between one place and the other I think uh, part of the uh, school of the supreme doorway is just you know knowing the best way to travel so like you know i know all like you know the the discount codes for like booking.com i know exactly <laughs> when someone is you know uh trying to cover their tracks by holding a weird broom in their tail and then brushing their uh footsteps you know <laughs> very like fox in the robin hood style i know all those things so i'm gonna try and roll battle to try and track them if that's all right um i think you well, if, if we're using the Arcana of the Supreme Doorway, it has to be Wizard, I think. Okay, cool. So I'll do Wizard next. Yes. So um, that's, uh, there, can I, can I grab, use one of the pool? pool there's, yeah, there's four at the moment, and you have one already, so that you can... And this so is two, uh, two, two guys in total? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a six and a one. Okay. I do really extreme numbers today. <laughs> You're right? So yes, okay. Place. You call on the mystic teachings of the Arcana of the Supreme Doorway. And you see, much like in a computer game, an illuminated path that shows the way these goblins took. You see it winding up through the foothills towards the jagged peaks and the snow line above. Symphony, warp, how would you like to pursue now that the way has been made clear? The doorway has spoken. I, I point with my extremely sharp chin. Oh! There. <laughs> well, like before we proceed, <laughs> before we proceed, important moments call for a wardrobe change. <laughs> and using my impeccable pristine style powers, I would like to manifest an outfit for each of us that will help us to be even more impeccable. Okay. So, calling on the way of 10,000 mirrors, full-length dress mirrors appear around yes. all of you, and magical arcana starts to swirl, and your garments poof, 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 change. Um, Symphony Hexblood, please roll me a wizard roll. That okay, is two, so that's going to be dice. two. And as you want to add? Um, I will take one. Okay. Because Still two left. what I am aiming to do is that the mirrors that appear in front of each of them are meant to, to, to evoke the confidence and boldness that everyone needs. The mirror speaks to each of them and tells them how fantastic and fabulous they are. <laughs> so I'll take Amazing. one, like giving me three. Oh, I rolled a six as the highest. Amazing. Okay, everyone, please feel free to describe your new wardrobe as you head into the snow line and therefore a new season. So you do need the new wardrobe. <laughs> yes. So, Symphony, as the instigator here, how, what is your new yes. look? <laughs> My new look, since we're heading into a more snowy area, right? So I don't want to blend in with the snow. I want, I'm going to wear this thick robe, fluffy, but it is red, so that I can stand out and make people fear 
the their own blood splattering on my outfit and it won't show. <laughs> and underneath is a leather suit. Because that means warmth. That's how winter outfits work. <laughs> notice, notice. Okay, um, warp power bomb. What is your new um, war forged outfit? <laughs> So I think like it's kind of like this, plug that... and play kind of <laughs> version. It really is. It, it kind of is just like how how the it's like a different like action figure piece set. Um, was like, like the yeah, it was my it was my youngest's birthday last week, and from my uh, British uh, his British British grandparents, he got the you know, one of those Lego sets that's actually three different things in one set. Just plug and play like that. That's yep. adorable. <laughs> I like the preface as. Um, as Symphony was giving us these mirrors, uh, I was full blown helping them to ride Vanessa Carlton style as the baby grand piano up the trail. But now that we're closer <laughs> to the hill, the I'd like to look a little more cordial, a little more fashionable. So we're gonna get a three piece white suit going on. Um, the vest is like nice and blue, and you have blue accents and everything. And the beard is immaculately trimmed for the war forge. Of course. <laughs> good lord hello mr grant howitz how are you <laughs> thank you wait, wait, so oh much wait, is that grant. the guy himself well, grant, so the man? Grant. huge love from over here my friend thank you so much oh, mate. My this goodness. another another classic <laughs> thank you so much um welcome in <laughs> okay so thank you prism hexatronic what is your new um, so like from afar, it's like uh, all black leather, but then up close you see it's got like blue lining. It looks like I skinned a frost salamander and just made like a leather parka and leather like jeggings out of it. It's skin tight, so you can really see my bones. But exaggerated big fluffy boots? Yeah, of course, of course. Just, just, <laughs> like, you know. It's like it's like frost salamander jeggings and leather uh, jacket with uh, yeti boots, basically. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> okay, um, so the three of you in your new impeccable outfits, um, as enabled by Symphony Hexblood's way of ten thousand mirrors, make your way up towards the snow line, tracking these goblins of the fire god Snowfreet to their mountain lair, which must be somewhere ahead. You push on. The snow starts to drive. The winds howl as you climb up into the mountains. But the snowflakes would not dare melt on such pristine examples of sexy battle wizardhood. And they flow and ebb around you as you unscathed make your way up higher and higher. You see flickering torchlights ahead. You have caught up with the marauding goblin band, unable to extinguish their flames as it would be heresy in the face of their fire god. You see the torch orange bathing the snows and the ice fields as they make their way along a precipitous edge. Is there anything you would like to do to hurry them on their way as they seem to be making their way towards a large gash in the mountainside? cave lair, perhaps. Hmm. Can I cause, like, a, a targeted avalanche? <laughs> <laughs> you can certainly try. Um, how would you like to use your uh, Arcana of the Supreme Doorway to do that? Or your Celestial Chain? Um, you know, I'll use both. Can I use both? Sure. I'll yeah. open a Supreme yeah, Doorway to the top of the mountain and then whip it with my Celestial Chain and then cause it to go down. Fantastic. Prison. What if? <laughs> Just I pause, I pause to hear this. Yes. What chain. if? Ready. As you are using your chain, and I use mine, therefore Double wielding chain. two different powers of chains, can I assist him? Absolutely. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. I'll, so I'll take out my like we're two doms chain one wielder of Ghost Wolf Chain. Okay, so yes, the combined powers, yes, of Ghost Wolf Chain and Celestial Chain combine, channeled through the portals of the Arcane, uh, the Arcana of the Supreme Doorway, and triggering this um, effect. Now, 
Um, you um, are. Let's have a look here. Okay. Yes. Um, please both roll me a battle. Let's see how this uh, goes, yeah. I'd like to take oh, one yeah. from the pool so that I can roll two dice. Please do. How many dice do we have in the pool left? One left. Ooh, uh, I'll save it. Okay. Okay. Not terrible, but depending on how hard this is, <laughs> I have rolled a four. A four? Okay. Um, I rolled this... a three and a six. It's two. It's two for me and one for her, right? Uh, yes, I rolled that's, that's two right. dice. But, yeah, you had the extra. Yes, so it was two each. Okay. okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Oh, do you just want the highest one from now on? Uh, yeah, please just give me the highest. It's all good. Oh, okay. My bad. No problem. No, not at all. Okay, that was uh, that was an audacious move. Um, so you attempt to create this doorway. It shimmers in the air, and the celestial chain and the ghost wolf chain lash out through the portal, and you hear the sonic crack as it materializes further up the slope symphony as yours cracks it forms the ghostly ethereal form of the ghost wolf which leaps forward and immediately starts chasing its tail <laughs> round and round and round no um, no that is not sexy that is not sexy <laughs> um you take a stress but you do also have a determination um, remember, who had the determination from before? I don't believe it was Recall. Symphony. That was also Symphony? Okay. No, so, no, yeah. I had a stress point before. Yeah, I think just a stress from before. Yeah, I think, I didn't I think get it was you, Prism. So, Prism, you, remember, remember you okay. have that, because that's an extra dice when you want it. Okay. Okay, so Symphony and Prism, you both have determination as well. Um, so, yeah, um, Symphony has two stress and uh, Prism has one. Okay. <laughs> Warp as yet unstressed by any of us. <laughs> Um, I think you were just like meditating under that river for all that time, just <laughs> ready, ready to ready to spring forth. Um, okay, but unfortunately, <laughs> the ghost wolf is distracted, distracted by its own tail. But Prism, your celestial chain, with the um, the moonlight of of the the beautiful sky above bathing it and augmenting it with its power, um, cracks and reverberates across, and with a building rumble you see the snow starts to shift sliding at first then cracking and building up over itself and churning you see ahead the goblins realize but not soon enough and as they start to scamper across the ice field their torches guttering in the wind half of them the ones in the rear are swept away the fires of Snofrit snuffed out forevermore but with symphony's failure there i'm afraid you do not get all of them and more of them continue onward towards that cave in the side of the mountain you give chase wanting to completely rid the poor villagers below of any further threat but they make better time and you have to take a little bit of time epically boosting up and floating over the swept away ice field and the path forward the goblins reach the cave mouth in the side of the mountain ahead of you leering and turning to you as they go to take shelter they start ha ha Stafrit has guided us the fires shall burn they will light the way and then all of a sudden they are statues. Roar! A burst of cold and ice and wind bursts from the cave mouth as, unbeknownst to these goblin followers of Snofrit, you have found yourself up above the heights of Icebire Peak and <gasps> Cryovain, the white dragon, has emerged from its slumber. The dragon of Icepire Peak claws its way out, crushing the frozen ice statues that were the goblins of Snofrit. 
The wings beat at the air, stretching after so much time spent frozen and slumbering away. New hunting grounds, new prey, new treasure for the horde awaits as it kicks off the mountainside. It screams as it spins, perfectly silhouetted against the moon saloon above, as it turns and swoops down towards three impossibly sexy battle wizards. What would you like to do? What? I think. <laughs> Maybe think. One thing that we can do is we can. Now, the dragon is glorious. We do have to admit that. So it's pretty we sexy. Can, pretty sexy in its we own can. Right. We can steal a few moments to prepare by distracting it with its own senses. Oh. I'd like to summon mirrors around the dragon that won't harm it but it will allow it to revel in its own glory it's been so while long. my while my friends put down strategic positions and try to plan a, a, some some kind of attack so i would like to use its own sexiness against it <laughs> ah as yes as only a follower of the way of ten thousand mirrors knows how indeed Please roll me. And the mirrors are also self-affirming mirrors. They will <laughs> affirm its sexiness to itself. This is dragon's cry. The last thing, the last thing a dragon needs is self self affirmation, I believe. But please roll me your two wizard dice. You have one in the pool, if you wish. Yes, I'm going to. You no, know, I'm going to use my determination. <laughs> oh yeah, please do. Yeah. Yes. So three dice, please. This is <laughs> audacious, or risky stuff. I think everything I've rolled is audacious and risky stuff. I mean, th th blame your own description. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, 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 it's fitting. I, I, I have rolled two sixes. Oh, I just wanted to celebrate amazing. that. <laughs> okay. Audacious. The timing is impeccable and pristine, such as your style. It's very self. The mirrors. Just a ray in the air around the dragon. It pulls up, fairing, colliding with them in this in its free flight. And it turns this way, that way. First it goes to growl, ready to destroy this trespasser on its own territory. But wait. Those horns. Those pristine white scales. Those frills, almost like a small beard on the beautifully angular chin that could only be the vision it saw in the shimmering ice of its own lair before it slumbered for so long it bathes in its own glory and, and the guess. mirrors whisper the mirrors whisper things like oh that beauty slumber it's certainly done you a thousand years shaved right off but not out of your impeccability you just look younger and even more better in every shape and form. The wings beat as it slowly turns in the ring of mirrors, admiring each and every angle. Yes, I strategize, strategize, strategize. Pristine. I am beautiful. Prism Extronic Warp Power Bomb. Symphony Hexblood has brought you precious moments before the dragon remembers that beauty sleep brings with it this beauteous countenance, but also an empty belly. What would you like to do? Prism, would you like to give them the paparazzi power bomb? <laughs> I'll lead them on, and you finish them off with your impeccable cheekbones. I think I'm going to ask it to dinner, actually. I think I'm going to, like, totally try and smooch the dragon. Amazing. I'll set the scene. Wingman me, bro. With, <laughs> uh, with my Careful, wizard. don't wing. I would, I'd like to disassemble again and have all of my limbs turn into big cameras and with the uh, lore of light school, make it like flashing paparazzi cameras <laughs> and the chest will form into another um, megaphone and ask for the autograph and picture and stunning 
um, picturesque form of our dragon to give an opening for our dear prison to give the final flirtatious blow. <laughs> okay, you separate out into your constitu constituent parts. The things start to go flashing from the boombox. And what, what was issuing forth again from the speakers, right? Oh, uh, so the speaker acts more like just random voices. Like, you know, like when you're in a crowd of paparazzi, they're like, oh, hey, can I get your picture? Can I get it? Like that. Just mm -hmm. a big right. distraction. Like, like, so the mirror oh, looking kind of absolutely flash gorgeous, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah, turn this. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, look, look at that wingspan. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> it's just these, yeah, these nasty, they brush uh, British paparazzi. While that's happening, <laughs> I'll, I'll look really like, like casual, like, I'll be like, Oh my god, can you believe how crazy these guys are? Let's get out of here, the dragon. <laughs> um, okay, so let's figure out how successful these are. Wolf Powerbomb, give me a wizard roll. Uh, John, I want you to know I didn't want this. You will put an Eldritch <laughs> Dragon, like an Eldritch Draconic Beast in front of me, and you'll be like, Shez, don't seduce the Eldritch Draconic Beast. And I'll be like, don't put it in front of me then. Hey. <laughs> I know, Chez, you've got a bucket you list. Know. The Tarask, <laughs> check. White Dragon, check. <laughs> it's it's one of every prismatic beast and also every CR30 monster. <laughs> okay. We just got to get you down to Avernus to meet up with uh, some, some lucky lady. <laughs> no, oh, Arch, Archduchess of Hell, anybody? Archduchesses are so hot, dude. Don't even start. <laughs> Um, Sorry, so yes, what problem? How is that uh, wizard roll going? Guys, I've got some bad news. <laughs> I rolled a one, I rolled a two, and I rolled a six. Hey, there it is. <laughs> uh... Amazing. Okay, so what problem? Using the lore of lights, you perfectly recreate <laughs> these different uh, paparazzi like flash camera flashes. <laughs> The dragons posing in this way. That uh, this is which which is my best side. This remember this. Do you like this? I love the the, the the curve of the tail, the swoop of the wing. Yes, yes. Look at these talents. One of them could slice you in half. Isn't that marvelous? And um, the creature is just somersaulting and spiraling in the air. Um, I think you know Symphony Hexblood. You've dissolved like half of the mirrors, so it's still got the curve like semicircle behind them. Um, and the <laughs> yes, Christian, Christian is there. Christian is there working the camera. Like, yep, feel it, work it, beautiful, darling, gorgeous. Yes, yes, more, give me more, all of it. <laughs> and um, you, <laughs> it's like that that uh, that uh, dropout TV episode of uh, of Game Changer where uh, there's that camera moment doing the uh, doing the feet photos of Becca. <laughs> oh God, yeah, 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 yes, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you see um, Symphony and Warp in your constituent parts. You see Prism Hexatronic effortlessly levitate from the ground towards the White Dragon. And at first, you're going to have to work some magic here. This, this is clutch against the odd stuff, Prism, as you threaten to interrupt this photo shoot. No, no. I'm trying to, like, wait until she... The dragon, I assume, uh, I shouldn't assume, but like we've kind of hinted that, that they, they're she. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to wait until like the perfect moment for her to be like, oh no, it's too much, stop. And for me to be like, hey guys, stop it. I'm trying to like, you know, I'm trying to basically like, like play White Knight. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. I think you, you hear at one point, um, she, she seems to come to a kind of a realization. She's like, oh, I shouldn't. I should be giving this away for free. <laughs> yeah. um, and, um, hey guys, no pictures. Come on. She has her own personal life. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> um, we have two dice in the pool. You have a determination as well. And three sexiness with those amazing bones of yours. Incredible I will use structure. the... Um, I'll just save the... I'll, I'll, I'll save the pool and the determination and i'm rolling three right for sexiness that is the one yep mm -hmm. now so three i want you to hold that thought you move in you can see the dragon is tiring of this attention they want to 
have some quiet time with their treasures, perhaps. And you see behind them, reflected in the mirrors of Symphony Hexblood's magic, a fiery glow. Warp, Symphony, your heads whip round, streaking across the valley from the distant forest where Snofrit was first born, made incarnate in the fires of goblin devotion. One goblin was more devoted than the rest. And in punishment for your destruction of this Snofrit warband, Snofrit's archangel, Efrit, comes swooping across the valley towards you, a fiery winged goblin made entirely of flame roars you can hear the air burning almost exploding like a sonic boom as it comes there are talks in the villages and the towns of Vandelver all the way out to the coast itself up as far as Neverwinter of the comet that streaked across the sky that night as Archangel Afrit charges into battle you have desecrated the holy flame you have taken out with your wanton sexiness the followers of the almighty Snofrit you shall burn you shall pay you shall not pull a dragon <laughs> when they come charging towards you flaming meteorites of pure fire form at their fingertips as they hurl them towards you what would you like to do symphony I like, how, like how every set piece has just left you completely speechless it's great <laughs> yes because symphony it just keeps getting wonderfully more ridiculous. <laughs> I I adore this. Hey, I, I'm just drawing on what you gave me to play with here. <laughs> yes. That's no. Fair. No. No. This um, is everyone. Wonderful. This was Sophia's ca uh, Goblin Punk's character that sacrificed yes. himself to the fire and became the Archangel of Sofrit, this new Goblin Goddess that they created. <laughs> and I don't. And I'm with uh, Sophia is biased. She doesn't want the cult to die, but also. <laughs> Hey, Symphony Hexblood. It's a celestial. If it dies on the material plane, it will reform. <laughs> it's true. In, in, in whatever whatever con is constituents the heaven of Snufrit. <laughs> Hold on, I've seen Dimension Twenty. I know it comes out as a weird vomit I think, thing. I think at the moment the the uh, the afterlife of Snufrit is just like a a fireplace somewhere in Sigil. <laughs> Sigil, yes. Sigil, sorry. Yes. They're not. They're not. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, no. The city. I think I, I've I've heard this law. I think it's the city of Brass down in the Nine Hells where new gods are formed. There's, there's like, there's like, a, there's a place called the Street of Gods in the city of Brass. Um, where... So it's just a fireplace right there. Yeah, so it's just a fireplace there at the moment. Yeah. That would make sense. Excellent. If free, if free tea mm -hmm. in the city of Brass. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Totally wasn't the plan. Didn't just name it Afrit <laughs> because that also means tiny, rambunctious, annoying thing. Deep lore, Christina. Deep lore. <laughs> okay. So. Um, oh. Yeah, what are you? What are you doing? You, first, you need to avoid these these meteoroids that are hailing towards you. Yes. Simpen, allow me to cool down this hot scenario and give you an opening. Because I'd you like to cool down. use my battle, yeah, and I'd like to do fist the balls, <laughs> so that that way there's an opening. <laughs> so we're going to deflect all the balls. We're just going to hit all the balls until they disintegrate, and then okay. that way, um, Prism and Symphony can. There is a flash of light as what Powerbomb's parts rejoin together. Bop, 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 bop. And um, it's like, Doom Fist. You go scorching forward, a light streaming out behind you. Please roll me a battle roll with your Doom Fist. Warp Powerbomb, that is two dice. There are two in the pool if you want them. I'll take one. Okay, okay do please it. do. That's not great. That's a four. <laughs> a four is not gonna cut it. You take a stress and a determination, your firsts, as it fails. 
you go streaking forward. The meteors, <coughs> too strong even for the doom fist of the law of light. As Snofrit's anger surges through this archangel, <laughs> I think I think perhaps Afrit, <laughs> Afrit has plot armor. I'm afraid. <laughs> Stupid, sexy plot armor. <laughs> um, and all of you see warp power bombs spiraling down, a little plume of smoke, smoke twirling out behind them as they just go poof into the snow, and there's an explosion um, of snow as they impact against the glacier. Um, <laughs> the uh, the white dragon, um, Cryovane, <laughs> I mean, it was right in the name, Vane. Um, Cryovane um, just chortles like, <laughs> Pick apart the wreckage as a toothpick later. Um, now, whoop, you're not dead. <laughs> so, you're just, just unsuccessful. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I would like to use magic to now take those dry mirrors that I had as a distraction yes. and now have them become like these shards they break into shards and then go in and attack <laughs> the uh dragon okay please use your wizard ability the way of ten thousand mirrors you have two would you like to use the final yeah. pool dice uh if you guys don't mind anyone out with it anyone out there with channel points the pool is dry okay oh so I'll be rolling, and I, I'm trying to do this <laughs> where it's also a bit of a lesson, where if you become far too vain and selfish, even your beauty cannot help you. <laughs> okay. I got a five and a six. Excellent. Okay. And a one. So please Balance. describe what happens as the mirrors shatter and cut this archangel to ribbons yes all of the mirrors shatter and they're going to go uh so we have the uh the dragon and then we have the archangel also in reach right mm -hmm. so i'll have it focus on the archangel and then whatever is extra goes to the dragon we're just, kind of like we're just yeah focusing on the one I, I think you're just trying to clear the archangel out of the way get this um problem yeah, sorted yeah, yeah. so that prism can work their magic yes yes so oh, which i mean with their sexiness <laughs> yes uh, same thing <laughs> so they'll, right. it'll go and attack the archangel and in in that way there's a moment where some of the shards go towards the archangel giving a moment of reflection and in that the mirror says, Snotfrit will never be sexy, as they go in and attack. <laughs> <laughs> Flag Obama, thanks for the gifted D6 there. Um, the mirrors streak forward, and the archangel of Snotfrit, the goblin that ascended from mortality, Afrit, hits the first one, is sliced. A little part of them comes off, is still flying along. Another one, swoop. And they're cut into smaller and smaller pieces until they are nothing but embers and glowing sparks, which curse your name, Symphony Hex Blood, as the goblin fire god Snofrit has forever laid a vow of enmity against you. And the archangel, howling, lost in the winds of ice by a peak is torn away and snuffed out only to reform in a certain little fireplace <laughs> i think uh, an arcana looks up from a book oh you're back home soon <laughs> and, <laughs> and you have cleared the way prism hexatronic much as this fiery archangel has smoldered and disappeared it's as if you take that smolder into yourself. <laughs> How are you putting the final move on Cryovane, the white dragon of Ice Peak? In, 
So there's like all these projectiles around me, broken glass, broken shards of mountain, f random fireballs being hurled here and there. I'm doing Ghost my... Ghost Wolf chasing his tail. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I'm doing my uh, most powerful look. I call it Magnum P.I. Uh, and it's like this, but it's also this. And you know, like when in Zoolander, he reflects the uh, Ninja Star with his like look. I'm doing that to the, the random projectiles around me. And it's a blast of projectiles towards the uh, like, like the like the final shot at the dragon. <laughs> okay. And then everything around me is oh. Psh, psh, psh. But you're using your sexy on the dragon, right? Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay. Well, I, well I'm using my sexy on the train around me, really. <laughs> <laughs> but it, that was that was your your path to dealing with the dragon, right? Was to to sexy it into uh, submission. <laughs> yeah, I was either gonna uh, uh, fight it or fuck it. You know, I guess we're just here now. Choices, choices. <laughs> choices, choices. <laughs> um, yeah. So. I have a Why flight or fight both? response, but it's not flight. <laughs> That's not what the F stands for. I think both. <laughs> right. Both, yeah. Your arms streamlined at your side, your white drow locks buffeted by the wind as you streak across the mountainside. Remnants of fiery archangel, meteor blade shards, mirror prisms, shatter off the charisma, boosh, 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 like a force field around you, and your cheekbones cut through the air itself, increasing your velocity as you streak towards the dragon. And for the final roll of this sexy battle wizard's sidetrack, please roll your three Sexy dice, plus the final one in the pool, to see if this clutch against the odds thing can happen. It's difficulty six. Okay. I'm going to start from the lowest. If you roll one. nothing but ones, you'll explode. <laughs> for, for drama, Ooh. I'm going to start from the lowest dice and work my way up. Please do. Of the four, four dice, the lowest one is one. Ugh. The second lowest is three. The second highest is four, and the highest is six. <laughs> yes. As you streak towards the large worm, it turns, and the full force of Magnum. <laughs> is it Magnum? Right, it was Magnum, the, the final move here, wasn't it's, it? Yes. Yeah, 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 it's Magnum, Magnum something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Magnum PI. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a different, that's a different thing. <laughs> just, just, just straight Magnum is what it was. Um, just hits it full force, and its eyes go giant, heart-shaped. Its taloned claws clutch in front of it. Its wings curve in a heart-shaped canopy above the both of you. Warp powerbomb, symphony hexplug. You hear from in the midst of this snowstorm, this bowl of twirling ice and mirror shards and flaming meteor fragments. Ooh! And prism hexatronic impacts against the dragon, and they tumble back over the mountainside and in to the cave mouth. A huge set of white shimmering curtains closes over the cave mouth and a chain falls down with a do not disturb sign across it. And Prism Hexatronic, the sexy battle wizard, has sexied the dragon of Icepire Peak into hibernation once more, where one day Last thing you it hear may emerge. From the cave is a, is a, oh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and oh, as... one day it may emerge what <laughs> it may emerge but that, that's a different campaign for a different group of adventurers <laughs> and <laughs> symphony hexbuck what power bomb the valley the people the Fandalin are safe Fandel <laughs> am I <laughs> Mr. Treat well well a couple well of, couple, of, couple of special guests swinging on by I'll show you something later. You see this vast region of Fandelva spread out. What other dangers? 
but other plots and schemes, monsters, tentacles, scheming bureaucrats, and wily bandits are lurking out in the wild regions of Vandelva. That is for your alter egos to find out, as next time we will return with the full crew to tackle the green dragon of Thunder Tree and meet the fourth sexy battle wizard that was in hiding. Ooh. AKA Soleil's mother. <laughs> oh yes. Mommy, sorry, what? So Yes. Do join us for that, dear friends. <laughs> Six months later, there's an egg. <laughs> Prism. <laughs> Mommy. Oh Myra you you have to watch this. <laughs> yes, please. You must. <laughs> there's there's so many there are so many lore reveals links to the adventure proper. <laughs> We now know why Lyra's yes. a tiefling. <laughs> yes, and uh, on that note, unfortunately, despite their best attempts, despite the sunglasses, <laughs> Symphony Hexblade did accidentally wink at someone in fandom. No. And I'll leave that to you, <gasps> oh, No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> More tieflings. Am I Pregante? <laughs> <laughs> Or for God's sake, and more. Amazing. But I know I'm pregnant. For now, the sexy battle wizards know better than to linger amidst the collateral damage. It is only a certain amount of time before those pesky Lords Alliance Arcanists and the Black Staff of Waterdeep come hurtling forth to bring unwanted justice down upon them. These killjoys, these unappreciative bunch that just do not understand raw sexy battle wizard appeal. You start to see the glyphs forming around you as the hibernation takes in warp power bomb. The inhibitor chip once more thrums into existence. Prism hexatronic. Your Posture stoops a little. The cheekbones smooth out as you become once more Darren Edamath, a retired drow adventurer. Yeah. And with a spinning twirl of black and purple smoke, Symphony Hexblank returns to the fiendish plains to look forever down on her son, Pip. And the rest. I was like, grandson, it would be. Yeah. Is that right? No, no, son, it was son. It was son. <laughs> yes, uh. your son, Pip. And the recipient of your first misplaced wink, Lyra's yes. sister, <laughs> here in the town of Phandalin. And all of you return to your dormant states, ready one day to be called forth by desperate people of the Forgotten Realms, that you may save the world once again as sexy battle wizards. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Mm. An absolute pleasure to play with these people in any system, in any place. Um, a, a big shout out to a certain Mr. Howard for dropping by. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> um, that, thank you so much. That, 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 that knocked me off my rhythm for a second. <laughs> um, and and honestly, a big shout out to John for all the amazing <laughs> insanity that he can muster and create and yes. have it all be lore relevant. Thank you. Like, it's, not, it's, it's one thing to create insanity in a bubble. It's another to have it lore relevant <laughs> and with impact. <laughs> That was a good old time, a good old time. Thank you everyone for joining us. Um, please claim those sexy battle wizard names and wear them with pride, my friends. And we will look forward to seeing you all next time. Um, but let us say goodbye to these fine people first. Symphony Hexpert, when you are not a sexy battle wizard, where can people find you on the material plane? When I am not a sexy battle wizard, <laughs> I am usually a corporate goblin by day and just unfortunately a regular Stop bard Stop wizard <laughs> the rest of the time where I spend it trying to write, trying, 
And um, currently I have been uh, streaming a lot of cozy games, which have been a lot of fun. I just yesterday uh, actually hit affiliate, so I'm very happy about that. Whoa. So follow me if you want nice, fun, cozy games. Currently playing Lakeburg Le Legacies, and I may have made the cast of The Office. <laughs> nice. It's fun. What's the, what's the Twitch name? <laughs> Let me do a shout out. Uh, just my 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 uh, account now, Sophia underscore D20, and you'll mm, be able to follow so shenanigans. D20. I'll be playing. Yeah. I'll be playing uh, tomorrow as we continue to see what happens to uh, Dwight. He may or may not have become a man of the evening. Man of the evening. Okay. Oh. That um, is what it sounds like. <laughs> There's the link, folks. <laughs> Give Safir a follow and enjoy the <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Robojax. Yes, everyone, jump on that and enjoy those cozy, cozy streams. Thank you. Thank you. Warp power bomb. <laughs> Friends, thank you so much for joining us in the pilot episode of Stupid Sexy Wizards of Fanboy. Uh, in the real world, I am an advanced AI created for Phoenix Con 25. No AI. No AI. No AI. Um, John, thank you. Ooh. Thank you for whatever this was. This was amazing. Um, brilliant. Fucking beautiful. I have no other announcements than to say, please, guys, if you're not following John already, what the hell's wrong with you? Please. <laughs> You're gonna get content like this throughout the other campaigns. <laughs> this is a detour, but the main road is so much better. I promise you. Hey, every detour and just enriches the story as <laughs> in the proper campaign anyway. So it's all good, all good. And last but not least, by any means, you care to employ Prism Hexatronic. When I'm not a sus sexy battle wizard <laughs> online, I'm a sexy battle wizard in real life. <laughs> uh, Shazlan's in the chat and all socials. You can catch me doing sexy battle wizard stuff in Japan on my Instagram. Um, yeah, that's it. Hit me up on Instagram or something. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Uh, and I'll see you guys every other Thursday where I'm playing a normal battle wizard. Hell yeah. <laughs> For a sexy battle not wizard? I don't know. And perhaps a little more in the distant future? But... Let's not uh, oh, yeah. re reveal anything just yet. Now, <laughs> thank you. A sexy battle, not wizard. <laughs> we are Phoenix Wacky. We play lots of D&D &D and other glorious TTRPGs. Um, and we are looking forward to delving into more fabulous, fabulous things from Grant Hewitt. As the charity stream um, spit out last time, we do have those um, one shots coming up we have giant goddamn robots to play we have kaiju girls to play and huh? <laughs> we're playing kaiju girls <laughs> japanese high school girls try to navigate the trials and tribulations of high school life whilst stopping themselves from becoming giant kaiju <laughs> i believe you've just described one of the anime that came out last season <laughs> kaiju 428 or whatever it's called <laughs> And um, we are looking forward to all of that stuff. Ooh, my playing one on Monday. GMW, yeah. that'll be over on Quest Junkies, right, mate? For their uh, Trevor Project charity streams. Um, do over check yeah. out our friends um, over at Quest Junkies. There's Patches Linktree there. And all the good stuff that's coming up next week with their charity streams. And we will be back next time, kicking things off with Tomb of Annihilation. And then the fabulous Jacinta's Tyranny at the end of the week absolute pleasure as always my friends lots of exciting things coming up jump into the discord if you want those sneak peeks what was that hint that we did there with shares and who else could be evolved there is another lurking in the shadows um who was in chat today i'm gonna to say that as a hint mm -hmm. um and <laughs> um also keep your eyes open for when our humblewood campaign kicks off proper we have done the fabulous reveal as we will be joined by Lauren Urban of Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms, the fabulous Jazz, and of course, Jess of the Uncaged Anthology fame, and Ludus Rex of Quest Junkies fame, and all sorts of good, good stuff. We had our session zero. The, Witch the Witchlight Carnival visited Humblewood, and it was a great time until they were driven away by pesky, fiery bats. But... We will be kicking that off just as soon as everything is prepared. So keep your eyes open for when that's about to start. Very, very fun group. And I cannot wait to play through the Humblewood campaign with them. And 
um, yeah, just all the other exciting stuff that generally goes on around and about the place. Now, thank you all, everyone. Um, absolute pleasure, as always. Thank you for all those D6 gifted there. Not a D6 wasted in the final in the final play of things there. Um, in my head, Canon shares it was the gifted D6 that was the six on that final um, sexy roll. And it was. It totally was. <laughs> And we will look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon, friends. Thank you. Let us head off raiding into somebody and spread that love forward. Send the emotes. Send, give them a follow. And we shall... Let's see who's on at the moment. That's from before. Refresh, refresh. Um, oh, okay. Here we are. Perfect, perfect. Um, dear friends... Please do um, stick around for that raid. Um, but if you're looking for some cool things to get in your games, these people that have been cycling by beside me have lots and lots of incredible stuff to put in your games. First and foremost, there is the fabulous Discord that is DM Charlie Gaming. Lots and lots of very veteran, experienced, wonderful uh, DMs ready to take you off on adventures or just give you advice and give a nice place to hang out over on their Discord there. The Awesome. Troll Lord Games. More about them in just a moment. CZRPG with all their incredible encounter design, beautiful maps, stuff to drop into your adventures, full-on campaigns. Ouch Center's Tyranny game is a sneak peek preview playthrough of their upcoming adventure. And if you're playing games like this, you do need those beautiful click like my thrucks. So, Phoenix Dice for the win there. We do have our coupons for CZRPG and Phoenix Dice if you want to grab yourself some taster discounts. There are the, those are the coupon codes there. Um, grab those and please enjoy this awesome stuff for your games. And, as I said, a little bit more about Troll Lord Games. They have a Kickstarter going on at the moment. They have taken out all of the OGL content from their Castles and Crusades product. And it was funded in 13 minutes, instantly prepared there. Um, amazing, amazing uh, product, as always, coming from um, Chuck and everyone over at Troll Lord Games. And that is who we're going to raid into, as they happen to be live at the moment as well. So let's give them a raid. Enjoy the outro with the video about the uh, upcoming Kickstarter there. Give that a follow there. Jump in on that. And we shall see you all next time. Thank you for enjoying this session with us. A first time venturing into the world of Sexy Battle Wizards. And so much fun. Um, cannot wait to give it another try later. But till then, stick around for the raid if you've got them. Let those phoenixes fly. And until next time, as we like to say there on these parts, a very sexy way soon. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Sexy <laughs> right there.